So I gave you this PDF, but I thought I'd talk you through it a little bit also. So I, I'm I'm assuming that taking the derivative isn't the issue, um, right? Because 16 is derivative 16 y is 16, and, and and because this is g of y, we don't need to worry about uh, dy dx's, right? Or, or d, yeah, we don't have implicit differentiation to worry about. And then derivative tangent, of course, is secant squared. And then then comes I think this is where it's probably start get hard for you so um, we're gonna solve this equation find the critical value so we're gonna we're gonna solve it I just noticed that I should have a closed interval over here will it let me write oh well I don't know maybe she's supposed to let me write <laughs> let's see oh that's because it's in white uh, let's go to red and see if that works there we go that should be closed um, so uh, yeah so so then we're gonna take this so when that set that equal to zero here right I said here's the derivative we're gonna set it equal to zero find the critical values I subtracted 16 divided by a negative 8 I got 2 and then I because it's secant squared I don't want to have secant squared so I took the square root so square root of 2 is that and it's and when we're taking the square root remember we get a plus and a minus and then solving secant y I, it's tough so remember that secant is reciprocal of the cosine function so instead of writing secant y, I wrote cosine y and just took the reciprocal of that. And there's two possibilities, right? There's negative root 2 and positive root 2. Uh, positive 1, never negative root 2 and, and 1 over root 2 and positive 1 over root 2, which we could rationalize, right? Maybe you'd have seen that more often. And so the square root of 2 over 2, that's negative. Square root of 2 over 2, and that's negative. And then we get to worry about, well, when's the where are these things defined? I mean, well, I got the two answers, right? The negative root 2 over 2 and the positive root 2 over 2. And then what you got to think back to your unit circle work. And remember, I don't know, somebody probably talked to this. Um, all trig functions are positive. Only the sine and cosecant is positive. Um, only the tangent and cotangent is positive. And cosine and, and, and secant is positive. That, that's because here... Both x and y uh, are positive. I, I do want a trig lesson. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I try. Don't want to drag it this on if you know it already. Negative, negative, and here it's just x positive, which is the cosine, and, and the reciprocal of that is secant, and the y is negative. So that's why the cosine. So we don't we don't care about and because they gave me that closed interval of of negative square root of two to positive square root of two. Um, I can only, I'm only concerned about answers on that and those two qu quadrants in, in both those quadrants cosines positive and secant positive so that's why I, I only had to worry about let's see what did I have written here let me go to the next screen so so as I as I wrote here we don't have to worry about the the negative one over root two. We only want positive root one over root two or, or root two. So we're so then what we're doing. We get the cosine of y equals positive root two. So our cosine. So think about think about. I mean, yes, you can do this with a calculator and get an answer that way. But if you think about if so, this is going to be in quadrant one. It's also going to be down in quadrant two here. I'll draw it second. I got the one over here in quadrant four. I mean, and since this is the um, power over four or 45 degrees, and this is on the unit circle, this is uh, the square root of two over two, the square root of two over two, because it's isosceles, right? And the square root of two over two, the square root of two over two negative. So the the angle that we're concerned of, it was concerned with, is a ne negative. Let's see, where did I write that? So, um, negative power over four, which gives me this answer, right? And positive power over four, which gives me this answer. So, those are the critical values. Um, and we also have the endpoints. So, I went, I wrote down and made a number line, and, and this is where I kind of encringed this this unit. Uh, but they talk about it in the book some they do it more in the next section so maybe that wasn't totally fair to ask you this question in weeks week six but
now that we're working on week seven, it, it's much easier because now we can use that first derivative, uh, first derivative work. And so what I did is uh, I found these values. And I so what I want to do is pick pick numbers in between those intervals, right, and see if the first derivative is positive or negative there. So I wrote down, you know, that's what negative root 2 over negative power over 4 is, and that's what po negative power over 2 is. And so I said, what number is in between that? So, well, I said negative 1. And so I just grabbed a calculator, and I typed that in. Actually, honestly, what I typed in the calculator was this. I did... 16 minus 8 times 1 over the cosine of, of negative 1, closed it, squared it, and it was a negative number. And then I tested in this range, zeros in that range. So if I dropped in 0, I didn't even need to calculate it here because I know the cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. You square 1, you get 1, times 8 is, is, is 8. So 16 minus 8 is a positive number, right? And then I did the same thing, you know, what I did is uh, same numbers, right? Just that they're positive. So I tested tested one in my calculator and it came up with a negative. So because the derivative is negative between negative power over two and negative power over four and power over four and power over two, that's when it's decreasing. It's decreasing here or here because the derivative is negative. Important is state y, okay? To state, you can, so there's two ways to word that. You can say it, it, it's decreasing because the first derivative is negative, or you can say that the the, the parent function is, is decreasing. Uh, how do I word that? I guess make it make it because it's a, uh, it's just say that the derivative is negative, probably the more, more convincing argument. Okay, then where is it increasing? Well, in those, in between those two numbers, um, negative power over four and positive power over four, because th in that case, because because um, come on, slide over. That's that's because the first derivative is positive, and then the test for max mins. After chapter seven, you've learned about the about the first derivative test where you can look for where the function changes from a negative to a positive. Uh, back during week six, when we were just looking at uh, finding the, finding those max mins, what we did is we listed the endpoints, the critical values, and we tested those back in the original function. Okay, and uh, so how did I how did I come up with one reason? I, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to. Um, you record this video for you because my open math is expecting an exact answer, not just plug it into the calculator. So how do we do that? So let me zoom. Let me make this a little bigger. So uh, of course, pi over two and negative pi over two will be will be undefined there because tangent's undefined. And you know, the original function uh, tangent has vertical asymptotes at negative uh, multiples of pi over two, right? Or odd multiples of pi over two, I should say. Um, so I didn't even worry about the endpoint. So I just tested those original values. I mean, those critical values. And so I dropped Here's the original function. I dropped in negative power over four. Well, in that case, four is canceled to 16. I'm left with negative, negative, uh, power over four. And then <laughs> I made a mistake. I didn't make it negative. And then I realized what the heck I was doing. Sorry about that. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more in a second here about how I knew I was wrong once I wrote that without without getting to it. It, it uses what we're studying during this next week too, this se week seven. Um, so anyway, so the negative pi over four is easy. And then what's the tangent of negative pi over four? Well, what you want to think about is since... Uh, tangent of pi over 4 is negative 1. How did I know that? Because these are 45. Remember, here's the negative pi over 4. These are isosceles right triangles with 45 degree reference angles, right? So if that's 45, this is 45. So then you got to think back to high school geometry. Um, this is one of those patterns, special right triangles. If, take the, if this is a 45-45 pattern, right triangle pattern, 
with uh, this being a hypotenuse, uh, without a radical with it, it's half the hypotenuse times the square root of two. So if we're on the unit circle, half of half of one is one half times root two. And see, so that's where they're getting the negative root two over two, or negative, yeah, and that's positive root two over two. And tangent is the opposite, right? Y over X or opposite over adjacent. A negative version of the number divided by the positive version of the number will be negative one. And same thing for, we have positive power over two. They're po same number, but they're positive. So to get those answers now, how did we get those answers? So I know, I know that the tangent of negative power over four is negative one. Negative one times negative eight is positive eight. And then uh, tangent of power over four is positive one. Positive one times negative eight is, is, is negative eight. So negative four pi plus eight and four pi minus eight. Well, this is gonna be a smaller number, right? Because four pi is negative four pi is 12 point something, right? Or maybe even a little more than that. So uh, negative 12-ish plus eight is a lot smaller than positive 12-ish minus eight. And that's how I know that it's a min and max. So then how do I how do I go back and do the with the week seven stuff? Just a minute here. See how the function I mean I have no idea what this function looks like, but I do know that it, the function is decreasing between negative power over two and negative power over four and then it turns to a de increasing function. So what happens, whatever this function looks like, it looks, it, there must be something going on where it's going down like that, then it's turning on. Notice the derivative is negative there, right? That's a negative slope. And then it turns around because it's a zero right there and then it turns positive. So that's going to be, that's going to be a minimum value. That point right there is going to be a minimum value. And then uh, conversely, when you get whatever it looks like, there's probably, because this is a tan graph, there's probably some vertical asymptotes going on here. So because the vit de derivative is changing from a negative to a positive, that tells me that, that um, this is going to be a minimum value. And then because this is going from a positive to a negative, that means it's turning like this, right? Positive slope to negative slope, that has to be a, a positive value. I mean, a maximum. So that's how you can use the, the sign chart to figure out where the net minimums and maximums are. And if there's no sign change, well, then you know it's probably an inflection point. But that, that's, I'm, I, I'm getting into the next, next week's work or week seven's work. Okay, I hope this helps.